Missouri offers a few hints at what the quarterback situation is going to be on Saturday. Plus, I take a deep dive into the Florida Gators. Just how bad was it against Samford last week? Well, I take a look at both sides of the ball for the Gators coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And thanks, as always, for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. So, hey to all of you out there in YouTube land. Appreciate you subscribing and telling a friend. This is the only five-day-a-week podcast where you get truly unfiltered thoughts on your Tigers each and every day. So you know what? If you want to talk about the quarterback position and who doesn't, I thought it was interesting. I thought you got a tale of two sides of the football program this week. Eli Drinkwitz, if you read between the lines, painted a picture of a pretty wide-open competition between Connor Bazelak and Brady Cook. But you know what? If you look even further based on what the players are actually saying, it sure seems to me that Connor Bazelak is probably going to start this football game again. Now, listen, that doesn't mean that Connor's leash isn't a little bit shorter because I do think after a couple bizarre interceptions last week against South Carolina, that Drinkwitz is going to be more willing to actually take Bazelak out if he doesn't like what he sees relatively early in that football game. So I do think the leash is going to be short. Brady Cook better be ready. But barring some sort of practice setback for Connor physically this week in practice, I've got to anticipate based on everything we've seen so far that he's going to be your starter in week one. And well, the Gators, for their part, not a lot of mystery at the quarterback position, at least not for this week. Emory Jones is going to get the ball, according to Dan Mullen. That's been the case the last couple weeks for the Gators as well. And frankly, Mullen's handling of the quarterback position has been a real, real mystery because really, while he started off the season with Jones as his starter, he proceeded to basically undermine both of his guys' confidence, in my opinion, by starting Anthony Richardson against Georgia and when that didn't quite go how Mullen expected it to, well, hey, we're going to pull the rug out from Richardson, even though we just pulled the rug out from Emory Jones a week or two prior. To me, that's the kind of juggling that makes it obvious why Drinkwitz is a little bit slow maybe to pull the rug out from Connor Bazelak as opposed to some fans would have liked to this have been done a month ago, something like that. So my point is you see why there's a little bit of patience there from Eli because I think Mullen has handled this situation terribly. Frankly, Anthony Richardson, to me, is a guy with much higher upside than Emory Jones. We kind of know who Jones is at this point in his career. He's a solid college quarterback who is a drop back, make one read, and if that read isn't open, he's probably going to take off and run. That's what I saw a lot from the Gators offensively, even last week against a Samford team that is an FCS team that got zero votes in the top 25 that week. Now, the reason I bring that up is just for context, because occasionally you will see an FCS team play with a team like Florida of that caliber, even though they are a power five team. But those teams are always almost without fail in the top five or 10 in the polls of FCS football. Whereas if you're, if you're outside of the top 25 or even worse, if you're not even receiving votes, I can't think of one scenario where there's been a significant upset from that type of team. 
usually those are, are 58 to nothing type affairs. So just the fact that Florida is that close and that type of ball game, giving up, giving up 49 points, I believe 42 in the first half alone, that's not only embarrassing, that's a huge sign of a bad problem for the entire Florida program right now. By the way, Topher Adams, who's a beat writer down in Gainesville, if you read Rock M Nation, well, they do a weekly Q&A with an opponent, a beat writer for the Missouri opponent. Topher Adams actually picked Missouri to beat Florida. And that's really significant to me because you almost never, and I mean never, see a hometown beat writer go against the squad he's covering when that team is a more than a touchdown favorite. That's just not something that happens. Generally speaking, beat writers are going to be more conservative with their picks. They're going to stick with the point spread, especially if it's over a touchdown over at a place like betonline.ag. Getting back to Emory Jones for just a second here. Like I said before, he's a one read and then take off and scramble type of quarterback. So if you're Missouri, you got to be patient. That's something that Missouri's done a good job the last two weeks of, in my opinion, is being more patient, getting lined up, and simply just playing sounder, fundamental football, staying in your gap. Well, that's what Missouri absolutely needs to do this week. And surely because Jones is a good runner, Dan Mullen can certainly design a running game. Florida's going to probably get some yards, but that's okay. Just be patient. At some point, the Gators are going to wind up in a situation like a third down and 10 where they have to throw the football. In those situations, we know what Emory Jones likes to do. We know he loves to throw hitch routes and curl routes, especially inside curl routes where the receiver curls to the inside of the field as opposed to the outside, making it a little bit less risky of a throw potentially for the quarterback. That's what Jones likes to do. So if you're Missouri, have your antennas ready to defend those type of balls all day. And also the speed option seems like something they really like to run on third, fourth, and short, something like that. A little bit predictable, but that's something that the Gators have been doing a lot in recent weeks. Now, coming up, I want to talk about that Florida defense that has really struggled badly in the last few weeks. Is this a fluke? Do we expect this to continue against Missouri? Well, frankly, I think I do expect it to continue. And I've got a whole bunch of reasons why I believe that coming up. But first, I want to tell you about Made In. And you know what? I think in Columbia, Missouri, we're pretty fortunate to have a lot of really good restaurants here in town. And have you ever wondered how your favorite restaurant around here consistently makes such excellent food? Well, simply put, they have access to the right types of kitchen tools. And with Made In's professional quality cookware and kitchenware, anyone is capable of making restaurant quality food at home. If quality and craftsmanship are important to you, you should check out Made In. Made In is a cookware and kitchen brand that works with renowned chefs and artisans to produce some of the world's best pots, pans, and yes, wine glasses as well. Right now, Made In is offering our listeners 15% off your first order with the promo code Locked On. This is the best discount available anywhere online for Made In products. So go to madeincookware.com slash locked on and use the promo code locked on for your 15% off on that first order. Once again, that's madeincookware.com slash locked on and use that promo code locked on. When I watched Florida against Samford last week, especially in the first half defensively, it really struck me how many of the things Florida was struggling with is what Missouri has struggled with defensively by most of the season. First of all, Florida is often like Missouri was, especially before the last couple weeks, just often late to line up. And quite honestly, if you can't get lined up properly 
defensively, well, you basically have no shot, especially against a, a decent offense, a decent quarterback, and, and a decent play caller, whether it's Dan Mullen or Eli Drinkwitz. Either one of those guys is going to carve you apart if you can't at least do the fundamentals right. And that starts with lining up properly defensively. You can't be looking over at your teammate and signaling and trying to figure out where you're supposed to be as they're snapping the ball. That's absolutely not going to work. Also, Florida really bad at setting the edge in the run game. So hopefully Tyler Beatty could have multiple chances to me at some huge plays on the ground this Saturday with those outside zone run plays that Missouri likes to run. And while sometimes if they're not hitting their blocks quite right, those will result in some some lost yardage plays. No doubt they've hit some big ones with Beatty as well. So hopefully that that trend continues for the Tigers. But I will say one thing that I noticed with the Gators that I didn't notice nearly as much with the Missouri defense was just a general lack of effort. There were just really some moments where just guys were obviously not that interested in making a tackle. And at least a couple of those guys like to think that they have NFL futures too. So not a great sign if you're a Gator fan there whatsoever. Also, I've talked about how Missouri, to me, has improved greatly at actually playing in their gaps, as Steve Wilkes has called it, my gap mentality. They've done a much better job of that in recent weeks. Well, Florida did a horrendous job of that against against Samford. At one point, Florida gives up a long touchdown to a wide open tight end because, quite simply, the slot corner, the guy who's on said tight end, suddenly just decides to abandon his responsibility and apparently just has a feeling that, heck, I'm going to take the running back coming out in the flat. Yep, that's definitely where they're going to throw the ball. So he thinks, hey, I'm going to make a huge tackle for loss here, maybe blow up the football. And boy, my girlfriend back at the dorm, she's going to be really impressed, isn't she? But unfortunately, no, your girlfriend was actually going, what's he doing? Isn't he supposed to be guarding the guy in the slot? Well, she's correct because the guy runs right by him. Instead, you've got two guys on the running back and suddenly you've got the big tight end doing the Justin Jefferson gritty dance in the end zone. Well, again, defense is about playing your responsibility. Sometimes, yes, you can, if you're a really instinctual, great Hall of Fame level type player, you can get away with that kind of stuff. Most guys, especially guys who are just playing college football, you just want to stay in your lane. And when you have that kind of just guys just going off and freelancing on your own, that's just a recipe for, again, blown coverages and just huge, huge misses defensively. Florida was down, you know, they gave up 42 points in the first half. In some ways, they were probably fortunate to not be down by more in that first half than the 42-28 score. It's one thing to just get beaten in coverage one-on-one, have a guy make a play over the top of your head, high point the football. But if you're just abandoning guys, that's just a terrible look for your defense and the whole team, quite honestly. Florida should be a lot better than that. By the way, I teased something yesterday that I failed to pay off about Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks. I wanted to give them credit for something strategically that has bothered me before. A lot of coaches play the end of games way too safe. And, well, give give Shane Beamer credit. The young fella was aggressive, and it almost paid off in a comeback victory for South Carolina last week. I want to pay that off. Apologize for not getting to it yesterday. But you know what? Over at betonline.ag, You've got a couple interesting Missouri lines. Of course, the Tigers still are the underdogs by more than a touchdown. Now getting eight and a half points against Florida and Columbia. The total still sitting at 69 still strikes me as a little bit high for whatever reason. That's just a gut call, basically. So don't spend more than a couple ducats on that one. I'm certainly not the betting expert. What do I know? But perhaps you 
my friend, are the betting experts. And when you, you know what, go prove it. Go, go put your money where your mouth is over at Bet Online, the number one spot for all your football and basketball action this season. And get your 50% welcome bonus today when you sign up on that first deposit. Just use the promo code locked on to receive your bonus. Once again, promo code locked on for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit at Bet Online, where the game starts. And of course, Tiger basketball tips off tonight, seven o'clock against Northern Illinois, a 14 and a half point spread there for Missouri. Obviously, they're the favorite. Hard to be real confident in that one, right? After the UMKC defeat. And, you know, there's a team that's ranked at least statistically so far, the same ballpark, a power five team as Missouri called the Washington Huskies that has already been defeated by Northern Illinois this season. So let's not start counting our chickens before they've hatched. That's for darn sure when it comes to any Missouri basketball game at this point. 14 and a half points seems like an absurdly high number, but you know what? If they cover it easy, if they cover it easily, excuse me, I will certainly take it. By the way, speaking of basketball, shout out to Kim English. George Mason off to a 4 and 0 start. I watched the game last night on the Big 10 Network, the second half anyway. Pretty impressive. Really impressive showing by George Mason, the Patriots taking down the Terps on their home court. Maryland was ranked 20th in the country for for whatever that's worth at this point in the season. But obviously, Maryland has a lot of tradition in basketball. Mark Turgeon, a guy that's, well, a former Kansas guy who's actually been bandied about as being a potential Bill Self replacement. Well, guess what? The Tiger took down the Jayhawk for the upset last night. Heck of a start. For Kim English and George Mason. Good for them. I'm happy for the guy. And finally, in the fourth quarter of the Missouri game last week, South Carolina had a fourth and six down 17 points. And you know what? More cowardly coaches like Bob Stoops in the 2010 Oklahoma Missouri game would have certainly punted in that spot in order to keep the final score a little bit closer. But Shane Beamer wasn't about that life. Instead, he decided to roll the dice. And guess what? They picked up the first down. They went down, marched down the field, eventually scored a touchdown, cutting it to 10 points. And at that point, you still just thought, okay, good for you. You you made it a little closer. But unfortunately, as we all remember, Basilak throws the inexplicable interception there. South Carolina punches it in. Suddenly, it's a three-point ball game. And hey, Shane Beamer, your aggression there, even though there was an outside chance, a very, very outside chance of victory at that point, I'm sure Amazon Web Services would have said that, well, South Carolina has a 1.78% chance of winning here. Again, a lot of coaches would have just said, ah, the heck with it. I don't want to lose by 20-plus. Let's just punt. Well, fortunately, Shane Beamer understands that the only thing that matters is winning and losing. It doesn't matter if you lose by 17 or 24. Who really gives a crap? The point is you lost. So you know what? Good for you, Shane Beamer. And if I'm a South Carolina fan, excuse me, I'm pretty encouraged so far based on what I've seen. And you know what? Finally, I got to admit, I'm still being a little wishy-washy on whether I'm going to pick Missouri to win on Saturday. So you'll just have to tune in to my next episode. I will see you all on Friday where I'll make my official pick. See if you see if I really think the Tigers are going to win or not. I'll do what I advise you to do in my betonline.ag read and I will put my money where my mouth is on Friday. So I'll see you all then right here on Locked on Mizzou.